You are watching Access LaFort County, Channel 97. Coming up next is the June 12th, 2024 meeting of the LaFort County Sheriff Merit Commission. You can find more information for this meeting by visiting www.accesslaportcounty.org. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the LaPorte County Sheriff's Department Merit Board meeting this 12th day of June, 2024. If you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Good morning. Did everyone receive a copy of the minutes from last month's meeting? Yes. yes. Are there any corrections? Hearing none to have a motion to approve as presented. So much. Approve. Have a motion to have a second. Motion. Second. Okay, motion and second. Any <laughs> questions? All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed the same. Thank you. Uh, hope everyone made it through whichever rainstorm you happen to come through part of the Thank county you. got it part of the county didn't and so um <clears throat> everything is all well and good i hope from that end so sheriff how are you today good morning i'm very well on this beautiful spring day good I'm supposed to get some heat coming in here in the next couple of days in the next couple of weeks maybe so. yeah that's good though it's all right uh, you'll never hear me complain about the heat true true absolutely i'll true. take the heat over the cold any day yes sir <clears throat> Go right ahead, sir. Uh, well, good morning. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started on the uh, the agenda. I do have a couple of promotional approval request forms for you this morning. If you like, I like to just uh, I can just read both of them and we can take action after the fact. So it's uh, to the Sheriff's Merit Board, where is applicant Alexander Nolan, a member of the department eligible for the rank of probationary <laughs> patrolman, except as noted in waiver request form G, if any attached has fade has been found to have them made the highest grade in written examination, years of service grade, and service rating grade total as per reported on the LaPorte County Sheriff's Department eligibility list. Published by the Sheriff's Merit Board, in my opinion, he appears to have all the necessary attributes to properly discharge his duty in the rank sought. I hereby respectfully request the approval of the board for his promotion to that rank, effective June 10th, 2024. Uh, the next one is uh, to the Sheriff's Mayor Board, where is applicant Daniel Diaz, a member of the department eligible for the rank promotion to the rank of probationary patrolman, except as noted in waiver request form G, if any attached has been found to have the highest grade in written examination, years of service grade, and service rating grade total. As per reported on the LaPorte County Sheriff's Department eligibility list, published by the Sheriff's Merit Board, in my opinion, he appears to have all the necessary attributes to properly discharge his duties and the rank sought. I hereby respectfully request the approval of the board for his promotion to that rank, effective June 10th, 2024. Thank you, Sheriff. We'll take these all together uh, unless someone from the board has an objection. Um, if no objection, I'll entertain a motion to accept the promotional approvals for both uh, applicants that were reviewed by the sheriff. I'll make that motion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? A second. I have a motion and a second. Any questions? All in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed, same. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda, uh, you can see on our calls for service between April and what May they have increased. Doesn't come to a surprise. We're getting into the summer months. Uh, it always starts picking up for our calls for service. Our total calls for service for the month increased 3% from 2,273 um, to 2,352. Our crash reports increased. Our traffic stops decreased uh, only by 9% from 879 to 801. Our car deer crashes increased from 20 to 24. And year to date, we're still down. I reported last month that we were down about 13% for the year. We still are. 
2023 at this time we took 12,163 calls this year we're at 10,611 uh, so it's it's not much um, we'll probably make some ground up as we get into the summer oh. um, with us today I have Marcus Gray Marcus is a uh, going to become a senior at the Indiana Wesleyan University uh, he's studying criminal justice and he is this year's uh, recipient uh, scholarship award from the Indiana Sheriff's Association for $750. So Marcus, if you come up, we got a certificate from you, for you from the Sheriff's Association uh, for your scholarship. We put Marcus at the top of the list because he does have another appointment that he's got to run off to. So, well, congratulations, Marcus, and and good luck with your future future endeavors. And when you graduate, don't be afraid to put in an application here at the sheriff's department. Thank you. Uh, Marcus was just one of forty individuals throughout the state to receive that scholarship. So. Yeah, uh, attached to your the, to your packet there, you'll see the year-end report from the Unity Foundation because uh, we were talking about scholarships regarding the Neil Tom Thompson Memorial Scholarship held uh, by our office. Uh, it's held by the Unity Foundation. You'll see the numbers on that. Again, it, it's doing very well, and we're very well pleased with the work that the Unity Foundation is doing for us regarding that. Uh, Dylan Heisick continues with his FTO training and is doing extremely well. As a reminder, he is expected to finish up around the end of July, so we're excited that he's making good progress and we are looking forward to have him on the street solo here real soon. New hires Alexander Nolan and Daniel Diaz begin their employment with the Sheriff's Office on Monday, June 10th. Uh, Alexander, who is a recent NYLEA graduate, will begin his FTO and Daniel, who is on the waiting list for the next NYLEA class, which begins July 27th. So we're hoping that we can get him in that class and, and that uh, we're pretty confident we will because our last couple that we've had on the waiting list for NYLEA, we've been able to get in there. So we're hoping our fingers are crossed with that one. Uh, Deputy Justin Phillips completed his six week canine school with his new canine riot. Both have returned to day shift patrol operations and is doing extremely well. Riot is trained in bomb detection and was funded through a grant from the Indiana Department of Homeland Security. Uh, Captain Allen has been coordinating with the organizers of Red Wine and Brew for this year's concert, which will take place on June 28th, 29th, and 30th. As a reminder, they donate their proceeds to the different emergency services throughout the county, and we use it to help pay for our canine program, our marine patrol unit, and our drone program. So those funds are very well appreciated. Uh, Captain Dallas Smythe has begun scheduling for the LaPorte County Fair, <coughs> which takes place July 6th through the 13th. It's a long week for our deputies as they will work over 900 hours out at the fair. So it's, a, it's gonna be a long, hot week. Now that, that stepped up number-wise because of the reduction of private security that they Correct. had? Correct. The fair approached us at the beginning of the year and they were wanting to do away with the private security that they had and they wanted all sheriff's office employees out there providing the security uh, so that we're going to have uh, additional manpower out there which will increase the hours that's worked out there. Yep. <clears throat> Uh, we started a new program at the Sheriff's Office called Fridays with Family Express. You may have seen it on our social media. It's a new approach, approach to community investment in which deputies will visit a particular Family Express store from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. for community engagement. To date, we've held these meetings at the Family Express at State Road 2 and Fell Road and the one at Johnson Road in US 20. Others are planned for the Westville area, Kingsbury area, and the Roland Prairie area. So those have been very well received uh, by not only Family Express, but also by, by the citizens with a lot of good interaction. Uh, at the first of the year, I, I reached out to Captain Allen and says, I, I want to do something. Uh, but let's get away from the traditional coffee with a cop or something. And uh, so he he come up with this idea. We pitched it to Family Express. They absolutely loved it. Matter of fact, the last two 
uh, visits that we've had with them. They've sent their social media department out and public relations department out to, to be a part of it as well, too, because they absolutely love it and appreciative that we've, we've picked them to do this with. So it's been a good partnership. So uh, item number 11 is I like to present Captain Andy Hynek with a, a commendation. Uh, on the morning of April 21st, uh, our deputies were dispatched to the area of U.S. 6 and County Line Road in Westville in reference to a, a fatality hit-and-run accident. Uh, a gentleman was found deceased in a ditch because he had been struck by a vehicle overnight. Uh, little information was to go on and that we know if there's a hit-and-run accident, especially in the middle of the night in the desolate part of the county, uh, there's not a whole lot to go with. There was no witnesses. However, Captain, uh, Captain Hynek, um, was persistent and just a little over 24 hours later was able to get a suspect identified and arrested here into the county jail and in charge with that subject's hit and run. So I've got a commendation that I'd like to present to Captain Hynek for his work on that case. <clears throat> And then finally, I did receive a, a nice card of appreciation from a Julie Schmidt, and I'll read just a note that she had written in the card. And she said, I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you for the many ways your department looks out for our community. You are appreciated and in, in my prayers, Julie Schmidt. I get cards like this almost constantly of just a note of thanks or appreciation. So I do like to share these as you're all aware. Uh, our next month meeting will be Wednesday, July 10th. That's the week of the fair at 9 a.m. Thank you, Sheriff. Any comments from the floor? Good morning. I just want to... It's on. It's on? Yeah. Okay. I just want to... Uh, take a moment and uh, tell the sheriff thank you for the commendation but I would be remiss if I did not uh, recognize the work of the other uh, eight detectives that we have in the detective bureau um, when I tell you that the unit is firing on all cylinders it truly is uh, we have some uh, very young detectives but some of the most motivated detectives I've seen uh, and in this case specifically we had a lot of tasks that needed to be divided uh, each of those detectives, nobody complained, everybody took whatever their assignment was and did it. And again, um, as one cog in the wheel, uh, together we were able to come uh, together and, and get this done. And as you've probably seen uh, in some of the releases uh, in the last two weeks, we've had uh, four fatal car crashes with six individuals that have been uh, killed. Uh, and several of those have resulted in uh, criminal charges. And in each of those instances, um, the Detective Bureau and Sergeant Boswell, uh, as our head of fact, have come together um, and ensured that justice is being served to those families. So I just want to take a minute to recognize them. The second part of this that I want to recognize is Detective Alex Pishker. Um, for the second year in a row, um, on June 1st, the St. Stan's Church in Michigan City hosts a 5K in Trail Creek. Uh, that encompasses the whole town of Trail Creek. And again, for the second year in a row, I've asked Alex to donate his time on a Saturday morning away from his family to come and do the traffic. And he's uh, both times stepped up and um, uh, gone out there uh, for the betterment of the community. So I just wanted to take a moment to recognize him too. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Captain. <clears throat> Any comments from the floor? Hello, my name is John Tucker. I'm a citizen of this county. I've been living here in the rural Laporte since uh, 92 or 98. Okay. What, what is your, excuse me, what's your address, sir? 7385 West Oak Meadow Drive, Thank Laporte. You. Um, the reason I am here today is just to let everyone know on this panel because it's been three weeks, well, four weeks since I filed 23 complaints against the Sheriff's Department. Just one week ago, I finally received a call from Detective Lear. And across this time period, 
My mom and I have been the victims of bias reporting by the Sheriff's Department that have resulted in false charges against both my 71-year-old disabled mother who lives with me full-time and myself. Across these complaints, there are five journal ones and 14 different officers involved, including a sergeant and a detective, and a captain, I should say, as well. The majority of these have happened in the last three years, including seven just last year. We feel we have no police protection currently because we have no one we can call being out in the county with the way we have been treated by the LaPorte County Sheriff's Department. I have tried to contact Sheriff Heeg and, and briefly mentioned to him the idea that possibly this could result in a lawsuit against the Sheriff's Department, at which time he cut me off saying that he can no longer talk to me at the advisement of the county attorney. To my knowledge, shouldn't it be someone would want to talk to prevent a lawsuit and cost the taxpayers more money instead of continuing the lack of communication, the bias reporting that is, look, many of these reports look like they were written by a third grader with the spelling and grammatical errors involved. <clears throat> My mom is a former work employee of the state of Indiana working 13 years in child protective services. If she had done her reports in the manner that many of these reports are worded, she would not only not have that job, had that job with the state of Indiana, but she would not have been promoted to the position of training new caseworkers. It is a shame that I feel that we feel that we do not have any police protection where we live. And I just wanted to bring it to the merit board's attention in case, depending on how the investigation by uh, Lear goes, that you are aware that these have been filed. Thank you. <clears throat> President Kimmel, if I could, I'd like to respond to some of the, the comments that were made here. Yes, yes sir. Um, you're correct. We did receive 23 complaints from the Tuckers last month at last month's meeting, but I'm going to go back in history a little bit. And I spoke with Mrs. Tucker back in the fall of 2022 in which she complained and she made the allegations that the deputy's reports were false and uh, not true in some of the actions. I looked into her complaint and I learned that the reports weren't false at all. They just were not favorable to Mrs. Tucker and she didn't agree with them. And just because she doesn't agree with them doesn't make them wrong. Uh, I, expect, I attempted to explain that to her. Uh, her mother further described the deputies as dumb and stupid. I then spoke to Mr. Tucker last year, the beginning of the year, in the first quarter of 2023, reference to the concerns of the false reports as well. Uh, he wanted me to order the deputies to change the reports, and which I refused because I was not there, and I'm not going to order the deputies to change the reports because I was not there to witness the facts. Uh, he then attempted to bully me in the sheriff's office by threatening to sue. So I did. I ended the conversation there because I'm not going to allow that. On May 8th, he arrived at the sheriff's office and filed 23 complaints, some dating back to 2019. Again, making allegations that the deputy's reports were false. On June 5th, Captain Allen contacted him and tried to discuss that the allegations and, and uh, allegations that were implied and advised him he was not going to get into the detail of the complaints as some of them were a personnel issue and personnel matter or they involved his mother's current and ongoing criminal case which we cannot report or discuss that. Uh, Captain Allen asked them if he had any further questions or concerns that he can address at which point Mrs. Tucker says quote I quote no because I doubt you even have a brain. Not only have they accused the sheriff's office and deputies of being corrupt, filing false reports, stupid, dumb, couldn't pass a third grade written exam, crooked, disrespectful, and accused the county deputies of being quote unquote drinking buddies to earn favors, and not to mention the latest comment of Captain Allen of not having a brain not going to sit here and allow them to disparage, intimidate, or bully the sheriff's office with these comments uh, to get their way. I'm not going to entertain this nonsense anymore. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, 
Mrs. Tucker, you can speak. Mr. Tucker, you've already had your opportunity during public comment, so you'll have to have a seat. Please. I'll just let's stay with her. I'm trying to catch my breath. My health has gone down totally because our neighbors have repeatedly made false accusations. They get police reports written up with no proof of anything they say is true. We have video of your detective Sergeant Struss coming out the last time we called. I'm hanging on this for dear life because I am weak as can be. We had video where I called because our neighbors woke him up again with one of their repeated alcoholic parties. <clears throat> he refused to look at the video, said he couldn't do anything because he didn't witness the incident. My son is a steel worker. He works 12-hour shifts and gets up at 4 a.m. We tried to be friends with the neighbors. She never had time. She seemed to be always planning her next party, which at one time was every weekend. Five and six hours long, sometimes all weekend long. They parked in her yard. It took the cops two hours before they ever came out and got the drunk. The drunk had left by that time, but he arrived drunk and parked in our yard. Ma'am, I'm going to stop you there. You're, you're making these accusations about drunks and people failing to do that, uh, you know, failing to take action against people who are drunk. Uh, those are accusations that, you know, this board does not address we do not take care of that that is up to the responding officers and for you to look out a window or look at video and make the determination that someone is quote drunk um i don't even think our deputies will take that there's there well, are certain excuse for let, let me finish I, I gave you the opportunity to speak okay i'm not dead. now if they're speaking if they're parking in your yard that's trespassing and that should be taken care of but i was there. not there i cannot attest to it this board does not uh, we do not handle that type of situation you had a picture at the time and nothing okay. was i'm just trying to tell you we cannot get anything done by the sheriff's office I have 16 pieces of trash that I have picked up out of our yard in about a nine month span from the, our neighbors across the street to same troublemakers. Part of my disability is my knee and hip problems. How many times would you pick up trash and not want to get some assistance? I called one week because Mr. Richter, and yes, Mr. Richter, somehow they are, she thinks she's queen of the county. Let, let's not get into that, okay? Name call. We're not going to tolerate that, ma'am. So you're not going to do one thing? I don't know what you expect us to do. We That is outside the realm of the duties of this board. How do you get an officer to write an accurate report, be respectful, not cuss me out, tell me to go back in the house and shut up. <clears throat> Is that appropriate? Ma'am, I, I, well, I'm not even gonna address this. I, I think your accusations are- If you're gonna get promotions, you need to know they're not doing their job right, I would think. You would wanna care, care whether they're doing their job. If he comes in here and lies, what's the incident that... Ma'am, let, let's stop this right here and now, okay? Um, so you want to be sued? You have the right to do whatever you want to do, ma'am. That's, that's your prerogative. You know, I was raised in a right. strict Christian home. I wasn't taught to sue. I was taught to talk. <clears throat> but this all started when the neighbor across the street decided she no longer wanted to even pretend to be a friend. She'd never had time to have a conversation with us. 
and she sent the deputies over. You're no longer allowed to speak to the rectors. Then they take me to court for a protection order. I'm not allowed to testify because my attorney was obviously bribed and told me to shut up and only say yes or no to the questions presented to me at the hearing. So therefore, Magistrate Muncie put a protection order on me and it's gotten to the point I cannot walk out my door and open my mouth. I have no rights. Therefore, I don't even go out and weed the flowers or do anything unless my son is with me. I have no freedoms and rights anymore because the cops cannot write an unbiased report. They will call, Richter's call, I saw her in the window. I heard her scream. She had the window open as if that's all against the law. They acted like I was supposed to move out when they got the protection order against me. There's nothing on the paperwork saying I was supposed to move out. They tried to renew it. And Muncie yeah, did not you're, renew you're, it. You oh, are, listen to me a you, few minutes, You are please. going way beyond the scope of this board. This board has nothing to do with what you're complaining about. So I, I am sorry. So the cops aren't accountable. <laughs> In, in respect of your time, I'm sorry that you're going through this, but this is not the forum. And you're wasting your own energy by doing this. Is so the forum you can you, you help for me. You have mentioned a couple of times suing. I suggest you contact counsel and an attorney to move forward with however they, that person. The forum? The that's all. Way? I don't know. I'm suggesting that because this is not the forum. He just sat there and lied. <clears throat> this is not the forum for this discussion. Great. I will quit eating and hire an attorney then because I'm on a fixed income. And it's, there's no Christians in this county anymore the way you guys act. And in response to him saying that, I sir, I'm, I'm going to stop. They were given in the reports. It states that my neighbors told them not to come talk to us, not to get both sides of the story. How is that fair reporting by the officers not to get both sides of the story repeatedly? We're not a court of law. OK, we're not a court of law. So you can uh, thank you for venting, but I'm, I'm in your best interest. You can you should take your venting elsewhere. I'm trying to save you time and energy. OK, uh, I just have to be on vacation, a staycation this week. So I made it here because I wanted to make this board aware that these were filed. Depending on how far they make it past Detective Lear. My thank son you. is so fed up with this county that he's going in debt, hiring me an attorney on these false charges. Okay. And I'm already out 10000 So as a false we will go ahead and hire attorneys and sue this damn county. We'll sue the sheriff's department. We'll sue the prosecutor's office because they don't even have grounds. You're stupid cops. Any other comments from the floor? Oh, yeah. Any other comments from the floor? <laughs> Hearing none, comments from the floor are closed. <laughs> Mr. Berger, anything from you? I do not. You sure? That was exhausting. <laughs> yes, I do not. <laughs> Ms. Mock? <clears throat> no. Jim? Not at all. Laura. No further comments. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Okay. Um, hmm. I've got to gather myself here. I think um, I think in all of the years that I've been associated with the Sheriff's Department uh, going back even to prior being on this merit board and just when I worked at the newspaper and doing crime scene photography and that, um, I, I could not be any more proud than I am 
of this department. Um, since being on the board and reading or hearing or listening to the continuous uh, documentation that comes in from the public from not only LaPorte County, but people who pass through our county that uh, have run, you know, have situations where the Sheriff's Department deputies are involved. It's, it's nothing but positive and uh, thankful for um, our men and women being out there to assist and reassure people are going to be okay. Um, you know, Captain Heine just brought to the point the, the fatals that have just run rampant, it seems like, here in LaPorte County, but yet the men and women of this department have gone out, and I'm sure that's not easy to roll up on a accident and it being a fatal that involves elderly people, children, and that kind of stuff. That stuff, uh, it, it has to have an impact on our people here at the department, but yet they continually go out and do their job and do it well, do it professional. Um, the reports are written, uh, they're reviewed by several people. Um, so uh, again, I just am, I, I'm at a loss for words as the comments that were made by the Tuckers, but um, they have the right to do what they want to do. But again, this is not the forum to do that in. So uh, thank you for listening to that little bit of rant that I had. Um, I, I also, on, on a little bit of a lighter note, I want to, I had the opportunity last Friday uh, to go to Blue Chip and witness a, um, <laughs> a, 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 a moment of people stuffing their faces with donuts and uh, for the Salvation Army. It was for a great cause and, and Captain Heineck, I want to thank you for getting that information out and the invitations that went out and, uh, you know, I know several members of the Bureau were there and several members of the department were there and uh, I remember going to that when it was just first responders and it was held down at the Salvation Army and they moved it to Blue Chip and I think they had 16 or so contestants and I think they had one gentleman who came in from Warsaw uh, to participate and why somebody would want to put their body through that I don't know but uh, it, it was a great time uh, the, the I don't know how many chairs they had set up but it was standing room only in the back of the room it was it was phenomenal I don't know I think it was a fundraiser for the Salvation Army but uh, again Captain Heineck I know you're you're very engaged with that Salvation Army and thank you for the efforts that you put in I do know that at the conclusion of that several members of the of the um, detective bureau suggested that a member of the merit board, uh, go up there and make a fool of themselves and <laughs> shove donuts down her throat. And being the rookie, I think the four of us have nominated Jonathan Berger to participate in that next year. So congratulations. <laughs> you know, that, that is a, a great event. I participated in it several years ago when it was at Salvation Army and obviously much sm smaller. And uh, as we begin to start on that, I didn't even have my first donut down and the gentleman who was the Michigan City fireman participating it with me had six down and I realized quickly that I was not even going to come close and I was not going to put myself through that <laughs> but uh, we've we've had uh, participants in that every year and it's obviously gotten bigger that they've had to move it to the blue chip but our very own Captain Hahn was a winner I think was that two years ago three years ago that uh, he won the contest by eating 15 donuts. Oh so uh, hats off to Captain Hahn. We, we, we're trying to bring him out of retirement to redeem himself with that. Well, th thank you for that act of heroism, Captain Hahn. That was, <laughs> how long did it take you to recover from that? You go into diabetic shock or anything? Or? <laughs> good, good. All right, well, again, I want to thank everybody for um, their diligence today and, and listening to what we've had to listen to. So, Laura, you had something else? No, I was just going to have Okay. Uh, anything else from the board? Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Have a motion to have a second. Second. Motion seconded. All in favor signify by aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Motion adjourned, 9.35 a.m. Thank you.